Right. Whether you are here or not on Friday, let's walk through this homework because, yes, it's a little bit different than the other functions that we did. One of the basic things you notice is your domain restriction. When we have a variable in the denominator, there are certain values you can't use. So your graph can't possibly pass over them. It's going to cause your end behavior to go certain ways. And you're going to get segments of your function. It's still going to be a function. It's still going to pass a vertical and a horizontal line test, or no, not really. Um, some, most will. But uh, it will at least give you like a picture of what you're looking at. If you really need to walk through that whole list with you each time. Because that's going to help you. Now, for those of you that weren't here, I don't know why that list was not in there. But I had a whole bunch extra, and I don't know what happened to, to them. So I'm going to have to make more copies. Either that or somebody just put them back in the wrong section. things you need to follow. Now, first thing through, let's take a look at your domain restriction. A variable in the denominator says we have a domain restriction, so take the zero out of your domain. Now, hold off on the range until after you do the rest of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually was just going to, I was listening to that kind of whole bunch, and I was going to get it to those who were here, but thank you. Oh, yeah, I'll just make copies to give them. What I'll do is I'll put it out there on the Moodle as a file in case you didn't get it, if you want to go look at it tonight or take a picture of hers and I bet you at least have until I get, get you more copies. Okay, then we walk through asymptotes. Asymptotes are the things that cause your end behavior. Your end behavior will follow along your asymptote. We determined the other day that a function can cross a horizontal asymptote but it cannot cross a vertical asymptote because that's where your restriction is in your denominator. So for those of you guys that weren't here, I'm walking through each step. You're going to find your vertical asymptote. Yeah, we can't factor this. So your vertical asymptote were your zeros of your denominator for your vertical. So we take this, we set it equal to zero, and we find this is our y-axis. Because we knew we couldn't use x equals zero. We knew it from this. A horizontal asymptote, we have three rules. We check your degree in the numerator, the highest degree in the numerator, highest degree in the denominator. Three rules. These both happen to be a one. So when they are equal, we set a ratio of their coefficients. In this case, a negative 1 over 1. So that's what gives you this one right here. That gives you that asymptote. So when you start, you start, I like to start with my asymptote. I draw my asymptote. Negative 1. Now it's going to make sense when you draw your figure in here. When you draw the graph, you can watch it go off these asymptotes. If you draw your asymptotes first, it's, it's your guideline. It can't pass through any vertical. The horizontal, we can see it pass through, but not too often. Um, we find your intercepts. Your intercepts also are a little bit different. Your y-intercepts, you're still going to go back to your equation that x equals to 0. Your x-intercepts, Instead of doing synthetic division or anything else, we're going to take your zeros from your numerator. So we're going to take this guy up here and set it equal to zero and find your x-intercept. And that's this little point right here. Your y-intercept, when you divide it by zero, we can't do that. So we have no y-intercept. And that makes sense, doesn't it? You can't use your y-axis. You can't cross your y-axis. These guys, and this is the tricky part, Especially for you guys that weren't here. This keeps on going out and don't going down. And so therefore, we don't really have a minimum or a maximum here. You're only going to get a minimum or a maximum if you actually see it turn up or turn down. 
So that's when you're going to see your minimum, <laughs> your minimum and maximum. So this guy has no minimum, no maximum. And we, we can see that. Concavities, do your increase and decreasing first. Y is decreasing. So give me your X interval from negative infinity to zero. That's where you're decreasing. And I'm decreasing again down here. So from zero to infinity. And your concavities work a little bit different as well. Even though it doesn't come back down like this, it still gives you a cave down and a cave up over here. So this section of your decreasing was a cave down, and that section of your decreasing was a cave up. Do your increasing decreasing first. Normally, that's where your concavity is in one of those segments. So that's what we looked at on Friday. These are rational functions. So they were a little, little bit different than your regular one. Okay, for you guys that learned how to buy it? Okay. All right. And again, graph it on your calculators. Look at your table. Look to see what's not being used, where your errors are. This one's a little, little tricky. If you put this in your calculator without your fraction bar, that negative says, parentheses around my numerator divided by my denominator. Okay, that negative applies to the whole thing, the whole term. What happens is though, when you go to do your zeros, you have to do something with that negative. If you took zeros of your numerator and zeros of your denominator, nobody got to use your negative. So make a choice, either assign it to the numerator or assign it to the denominator. I, I never use the fraction bar. I write it out, my divide. So it, for me, it's more obvious that here's where my negative gets distributed. It can go into your denominator, whichever you feel to put it in. But you gotta get it into one of those. Now, we have a domain restriction, and you can kinda tell in your calculator where your domain restriction's gonna be. Again, you can look to see where your errors are your x values, and you almost can tell when you graph this, something's going on to cause your end behavior to go different. Yes, sir. The horizontal asymptote, there's a three things of things that you check, your degree in your numerator versus your degree in your denominator. What's the highest degree up here? One, and here. There's three things. When the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator, when it's equal to, and when it's less than. Those are the rules we have to follow. So when these are <coughs> equal, it says take the coefficients in front of this and set a ratio. But don't forget, we had to assign one of these that negative. So I chose to distribute across my numerator. So there's my negative 1 over 1. Pull out your coefficients next to it. Okay, look for the degree, the highest degree in the numerator, highest degree in the denominator. If they're not equal. Then we have other choices. If they're, if they're not equal, if the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, we do something. We use y equals zero. It automatically says use y equals zero. If the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator, we don't have a horizontal. But today we will look at another case when it's just one higher, we have a slant, which is at the bottom of your list. But you have three things that you have to go by. Now, one of the kids in the last class asked me, when I give you a test or a quiz, am I going to give you the sheet to use? Normally, I would say no, but I think it is a helpful tool. It kind of forces you to say, what am I doing? What tool comes next? What do I need to find? So yes, I will give you the list of things you need to, to look for. This is kind of like a bad week. We'll probably end up going to have a <coughs> snow day tomorrow or a delay or something else going on now, I heard. So we'll kind of have to make deal with this, with this week. My goal was to get through the end of this by the end of the week. I figured by Thursday I would quit. And I kind of have an extra day just in case to try it. it it's not... I drag this out, but I was kind of hoping we would end it, and then you would have my homework for the vacation, and you could work on your project. 
and get that ready. And Dr. Ness for two or three weeks when we come back. Well, I just have to play this one by ear. See what happens. I guess you can't judge what's going to happen with my mother nature next, huh? So, intercept. Is that your X intercept, your Y intercept? Your Y intercept is when X is zero. Go back to your equation. Plug in X of zero. Zero, zero. Don't forget this negative out here, or if you distributed it. There's your intercept. And, and check it on your calculator. Do look for your zero and see if it's there. If it's not there, and you found it here, something's wrong. Like if you forgot that negative sign, it would give you a positive one half. But on your graph, it will appear as a negative one half. So that's got to tell you something went wrong. Your x-intercept, again, is your zeros of your numerator. So take your numerator, factor it. We, we didn't have to factor. Oh, so the x is only the numerator. X is the numerator. After it's been factored. So we're going to see that pretty soon. So we didn't have to factor anything, but we will see that the next part starts. So we look at the numerator. And again, check that. Make sure that is at negative 2, 0. We have a graph to use. Okay? We have no inflection points. We have no max and min because these things go out and out and out. We have a decrease in our y and a decrease up here. So get your decreasing segment. And then from there, you can do your concavity. Here's concave down and here's a concave up. What was the range? Oh, the range. Okay, if we took out your, what did we take out of here? For your, what? Negative one. We took out your negative one. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Do the range after you come up with your, with, with your action point. Because if you have a horizontal, it's going to come out. Sometimes it will pass through origin or pass through something, and then we don't have to take it out. But if we have a, a jump here, you have a jump. Okay, here's a nice one. And we have a domain restriction again. First thing, go for that domain restriction. I think that's the most helpful. Start here. Because you can't use a zero, get it out of your domain. Right away, you know this is going to be your asymptote. Right away, you know that's your asymptote. We can't factor anything. So we can come down. Now here's one of our other things. Your denominator has an x squared. Your numerator has an x to the 0, doesn't it? Because there is no x. So if there is no x, it's really x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1. So my, numer my numerator really doesn't have an x, so it's considered x to the 0. If your numerator is less than your denominator, you automatically get y equals 0. That's your x axis. That's this guy right here. You automatically get that as your asymptote. And, and you should pretty much see it as soon as you graph it. As soon as you graph it and you see something weird like this happen, you say, whoops, there's an asymptote, there's an asymptote. Okay? So we just follow it through. We do our x-intercept, our, our x-intercept, our y-intercept. We have no x-intercept because we have no variable in our numerator. So therefore, we have no x-intercept. Our y-intercept, we set 0 for x, but we can't divide by 0. We have no y-intercept. Does it look like that on our graph, too? It doesn't cross the x or the y. We're good. Again, we have no max and min. This, this y is increasing. This y is decreasing. So you've got an increasing segment and a decreasing segment. And your concavities are both up. Here's your concavities going up that way. For those of you that were in here, I'll get you that sheet because it's so much easier to sit there with a sheet of information and go through it. Um, it's much, much easier. Why? Why is y increasing? If you follow from left to right, your y's slowly increase. Do your y increasing? Well, you always read left to right. 
So you read like this and you see your y's increasing. But by the x, from negative infinity to zero is an increase. Now here's your y's decreasing from zero to infinity. That's a decrease. You read your x's, but you're charting your y's if they're increasing, decreasing. That's, that's the value of your function, is your y. Some of you are still giving me y values on your increase and decrease. Okay. Here we have another domain restriction. Figure out what domain this can't be. We can't use a 2. So we take the 2 out of our domain. And you're going to see that it looks a little bit weird when you graph it as well. We've got an asymptote going on here. A couple of them. I like to start with my asymptote, and then I fill in my pieces after that. I think it's harder the other way around, and then to put the asymptote in it. So I start with my asymptotes. Find your vertical asymptote. You can call this VA, HA, just to for short. Your vertical asymptote is your zeros of your denominator, and we know that from your domain. Here's, here's your horizontal again. What's the, uh, what's the exponent in the numerator? for the variable x in the, in the numerator? Oh, no. Nothing, zero, right? So the, the numerator is less than the denominator. You automatically get your xx. And you can almost see it, right? So find your intercept and check them. Check them in your calc. This has a decreasing. Here's your decreasing. Your y is decreasing. Your y is decreasing. Even though they're both decreasing, this part is a concave down, this part is a concave up. Nobody has questions? You all have this kind of information on there? Yeah? Good. And the last one, we factor, but there's nothing to reduce. Yeah, today, uh, today we're not going to reduce either, but tomorrow we will. So we look at your denominator. We can't use negative or positive 2. We take it out of your domain. We look for your asymptotes. Now, this is one of those like we had on Friday, where this side passed through your horizontal asymptote. It, it passes through a horizontal, it can, but it can never pass a vertical. That's your denominator restriction. So, and I told you on Friday not to worry about the inflection point. I figured I would just add it after today. I just didn't want to put too many things <coughs> on you on Friday. So, here's your asymptote, your vertical asymptote, zeros of your denominator. Your horizontal asymptote. There's an x squared and an x squared. Look at the coefficients are 1. Here's your y equals 1. Here's your line. Your horizontal. That takes care of these guys for you, the side ones. Now the middle passes right through it. The middle, I don't know if you noticed this. We talked about this on Friday. There's an inflection point. It looked like I was coming down, but I changed my mind and went up over there. So that is an inflection point. We, we were going to go motion of down, but we changed halfway and instead went up. So anytime you change your motion there, that's an inflection point. And there we have your concave down only from here to here, and your concave up from there to there. But I wasn't concerned about the inflection. I figured we would, again, address it today. And because this put your zero back on the board here, your range is all real numbers. You are okay with your range. We're all real numbers. It doesn't happen too often that it jumps. Tomorrow we'll see another one that jumps over it. The idea is it still uses this asymptote as end behavior. It still follows these all the way down. And you know how close we are to calculus right now? Calculus plus end behavior. Those are their limits. At the very end of this course, we'll let readdress some of these things using actual limits.
we'll, we'll address it with the limit notation on it. And you're going to see it's exactly what we've been doing all along. So uh, what we want to know is where, when does it approach? What is it approaching as it keeps on going? Like what value will this approach? This will approach one as this keeps on going. Because that's what this end behavior is designed for. And that's what a limit does. So really you're learning a, lot of, a little bit of calculus as we do this. Do you have any questions? Um, the concave up, what is this zero between? Because this little piece right here, we kind of was concaving down, then we changed our mind and concaved up. So this little section, because that's an inflection point, this little section here from zero to two is a concave up. This little section from negative two to zero is a concave down. We kind of were, we kind of went, so it looked like we were going like this, Nita. It looked like we were about to go like this, but we changed our mind. We went like this instead. So that, that would be part of your concavity. Mm -hmm. So where is the concave down? There's a concave down here in this section, and there's a concave down here from negative infinity to zero. At least I'm sorry, from negative two to zero. Just in this little section right here. I, I just have to move it down. Oh. You probably just can't see it. Okay, thanks, Tatiana. See it? Negative two to zero. That, just that little section. Yeah. Increase and decrease. Oh, I didn't write it, huh? Okay, you tell me. Where's your increase? Yeah, when, when is y increasing? Yeah, negative infinity to what? Negative two. Is y increasing anymore? Look for your y's. Read left to right. Come down here. What's y doing over here? Good. Is y increasing anymore? From 2 to infinity. Good. My whole function was increasing. Remember, you're reading left to right. And you're looking for y to go up and down like a roller coaster, but you're charting by the x value. That's a tough concept. There's no max and min's on this guy. Today we'll do a max and min. Is it decreasing the same thing? Or? Well, if it's going the opposite way. If the, everything was shifted like this, going the opposite way, they would all be decreasing. Like if I took that and shifted it this way, made it go like this, made this guy go like this, and made this one go like this, they would all be decreasing. So there's no decrease? Not on this one. Question? All right, today we're adding one more piece to your puzzle. 